Well, welcome to week six of the state legislature. Today's February 19th, 2018. So again, another busy week before us. Uh, this coming week, the Senate Resources Committee is going to hear a proposal from the governor on bonding to pay for the oil tax credits that the state owes. So remember, these tax credits are owed to the small companies. This was an incentive that the state of Alaska put forward over multiple years. It started back about 2008 or so, and then uh, additional tax credits were added to incentivize small companies to come up and develop our resources. Because people said, you know, all we've got up here is the big three, BP, Conoco, and Exxon, and we need some smaller players. We need some other companies. And so we invited them to come up and said, hey, we will help cover some of your costs. We'll give you credits for certain expenditures. Well, the last two, three years, actually, um, these tax credits have been vetoed or last year constricted very um, small to very small reimbursements. So but these small companies have gone out and borrowed money using the tax credit as collateral, and now these debts are due. The state hasn't paid their part of it, and so these companies are left holding the bag. So Commissioner Sheldon Fisher has crafted a very innovative way of paying these using bonding. Uh, the credits will be worth 10% less than they would have been otherwise. Uh, it's pretty complicated, uh, but the Senate Resources Committee is going to have a hearing on that on Wednesday. So uh, it should be pretty interesting. There are two members of Senate Finance that serve on resources this year. We have a former co-chair of Senate Resources and another current um, current member of, of the uh, Resources Committee, so, or excuse me, of the Finance Committee. So it should be a pretty good hearing. Some of you may have noticed uh, an article on the front page of today's paper, today being Monday the 19th, that talks about the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission having significantly more questions for the Alaska Gas Line Development Corporation. So FERC, as they're called, uh, sent several hundred uh, questions, I believe there were about 700 questions, to AGDC, the Gas Line Development Corporation, uh, asking for details on this gas pipeline. The uh, AGDC answered them, but apparently not adequately. So there's significantly more work that needs to be done there. And uh, FERC has been asked to evaluate Point McKenzie, that's in the Matsu Valley, and also Valdez as possible ex export locations. Uh, right now, the export location is Nikiski. Um, so that should be pretty interesting. One of the things that we here in the Senate are pretty aware of is um, the risk to the state in terms of cost overruns and things like that for this gas pipeline. But there's another risk that's out there, and, and that's the salmon initiative that may appear on the ballot uh, this coming year. Uh, if that salmon initiative passes, and I believe it's called Save Our Salmon or something like that, it actually will shut down all development not just oil and gas and mining, but it will also reduce any kind of projects. It will stop any kind of projects for municipalities, stop roads, property owners who might want to put a building on their property if they're near any kind of water body that has fish in it, that will be prohibited. So it's pretty far reaching. It's creating a, a significant risk factor uh, for the state and something you should be aware of. Um, as you may be aware, uh, we are missing a senator, still missing a senator from the Valley. Uh, it was Senator Dunleavy that held that seat uh, previously, and he has resigned. So uh, the latest development, the two districts involved, the two House districts involved, have sent the governor four names um, that will be forwarded to us. Um, he will he will choose one of those names to send to the Senate, and then we will either confirm or ask him to sec select someone else. So that's continuing to go through the process. And last of all, in the newsletter today, there's a great little video that describes uh, public safety, uh, specifically the state troopers, challenge in keeping staffing. So essentially what they're asking is that the state re 
re-begin, start again, the defined benefit retirement program for state troopers. And by the way, firefighters are asking for the same thing. So take a look at the video. I'm interested in your thoughts. Uh, the reason the state stopped the defined benefit program and went to a defined contribution program, that's a 401k, is because we simply couldn't afford um, the health care component and um, it was very, very generous retirement program that frankly the state couldn't afford anymore. We're still paying for all the folks that were on the defined benefit program from before. So take a look at the video. I'm interested in your thoughts. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you next week.